You mean you want me to marry you? Yeah, I hope you're not too surprised by all this. You knew I was in love with you. <laughs> well, yes. But I guess I knew I'd have to face this sooner or later. You don't have to give me an answer right oh, no, now. No, no, Peter, I, I want to. Look, I, I think it's important that you know just exactly how I... Well, exactly what... Peter... Yes, I'll marry you. It's inexcusable. We should have been notified of her death immediately. Don't worry. I intend to. Television people are here. Well, good. Good? Yeah, good. Look, when you walk through that door, and in time to make the six o'clock news, I might add, you're going to be the very model of the tastefully grieving widower. Red eyes, a little uh, tremor in your voice, a carefully worded statement. I'm sorry. But I don't have any stomach. Well, then you'd better develop one right now. We've just been dealt four aces, and we're going to play them. Becky, I said no interruptions. It's me. I told the guard not to let any members of the press in here. What guard? I'll see you. Don't worry, Sebastian. I've sent him on a wild goose chase. Just here for a brief statement. Well, you can get out of here. You'll get your statement when everyone else does. Sebastian, you're forgetting something. Everyone else doesn't know what I know. Namely, that Kate cut the honeymoon short. I mean, if there was a honeymoon. After all, she did come back to Kingsley earlier than expected. Much earlier. This man just lost his wife. I just lost a good friend. Don't you have the decency to leave us alone? Sure. Yes, Sebastian. Just as soon as I find out just how deep your grief is, Lee. All right. I've had enough. Sebastian? No. Are you just going to stand there and let this parasite tear into you like this? He doesn't care about you or Kate. On the contrary, Sebastian. You don't have to make a statement now. I'm sorry, Jean. But I really have nothing to say at this point. I'll give you a statement later in the afternoon. I said no phone calls. Oh. Well, put him through. Sergeant Brubaker, you better talk to him. Yes, uh, Lee Carruthers here. Uh, Mr. Carruthers, I'm sorry to disturb you like this, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to question both you and Sebastian Knight. Uh... When? Probably uh, tomorrow, possibly the day after. Uh, if you have any campaign business that might be taking you out of town, I would suggest... Sergeant Brubaker, my wife has been murdered. I have no other campaign business. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to suggest that... I'll this. be available whenever you need me, but you'll be kind enough to respect my responsibilities with the funeral, I hope. Uh, yes, of course. And you'll also be kind enough to keep the press out of this... I'll, I'll do what I can. Well, thank you. Although, I think that aspect of this tragedy is uh, already out of control. You will marry me? Yes. All right! I knew you'd say yes. I knew it. She said yes. She's going to marry me. You hear that? I do. she says. Well, look, this is going to be great. We're ne never going to have problems. Ever. Ever. It's going to be one <laughs> long, happily ever after. You're not being very realistic. Yes, I am. Think of everything that we've overcome. All the lessons that we've learned. I'm telling you, we're not gonna let anything spoil this. Come here. Peter, come on. I don't care who's looking. 
Will you I love you. Sit down. You're making me uncomfortable. It's gonna work out. I promise you. I hope so. Oh, oh man, we got so much to talk about. We do. Yeah. Where are we gonna live? I mean, uh, how are we gonna live? Should I quit school? Oh, Peter, please. Hey, what's wrong? Uh, hey, I know, I know. All this came much too quick for you. I'm sorry. I tried to wait. I just couldn't. But when you think about it, why should we? Huh? Look, okay, we'll plan it now when you get probation that we carry out the plans. Hey, we waited long enough. Give it a couple of days, you're gonna feel exactly the same way I do. I'm giving you 10 seconds to get out of here. Gentlemen. That hack has been trying to nail us ever since the engagement I leaked to him backfired. <laughs> well, his plan to make you look suspicious in this is going to backfire too. What makes you so sure? Because we have the public sympathy and we're going to play it for all it's worth. <laughs> Any innuendo he could come up with won't be able to touch the tide of support we can build. I told you, I'm not going to take part in any of this. Now hold on, you listen to me. You've been touched by tragedy. You bear it nobly, it can only enhance that image of yours. It'll come across as strength in a crisis, duty above all else. Think about it. What better qualities of leadership could the voter look for? gonna have the abortion why did you let me believe that you weren't let go of me with the kid I thought we might have a chance we never had a chance for anything then why did you let me believe that we would never mind I know why do you revenge pure and simple do you ever feel guilty for anything that you do you'll do anything to get your own way I'll do anything what about you and your lies to the police I didn't lie to the The only police. other person who knew about my abortion was my mother. You had to have talked to her. Why did you tell Brubaker you hadn't? You talked to my mother, didn't you? Yeah. Why did you say you didn't? It's my business. Oh, no, Gil. I think it's my business, and it's police business, Then too. let them handle it. I will. I'm also very curious to know where you were the rest of the night. I was looking for you to get even. Is that a threat? Because if it is, I'm sure Brubaker would be very interested in knowing about it. It was. But now that I can see things more clearly, it's more like an admission of stupidity. Those should come easily for you. I realized how stupid it would be to ruin the rest of my life because of you. Although someone would be doing you and the world a favor by putting a bullet through you, it won't be me. You're not worth it. There's something you should know before you leave. Send me a letter. The gun that killed my mother belonged to you. How do you know? I know. The question is, how long will it be before the police know? I kept the gun here. Uh, Dave found it and used it. It's a simple explanation. Maybe. But coupled with the lie that you told, that's not the only solution. Maybe you should be going to jail for my mother's murder instead of Dave. Yeah. Sergeant Brubaker, this uh. is Claudia Schmidt, Amber Phillips' next-door neighbor. She insisted on coming down here and speaking to you personally. Why? Because that's the way it's done, young man. 
Uh, I, I assigned Officer O'Connor to go down to your apartment to talk to you, Mrs. Schmidt. Uh, that's the way it's usually done. Uh, this, I, I think I can handle it from here. Thank you, O'Connor. Thank you, sir. Shameful. Uh, what was that? That woman in that work, modeling her body for profit. Um, it's Amber Phillips. Are you referring to Amber Phillips? Yes. Yeah. Uh, why don't you, um, uh, here, sit Thank down. you. Uh, I assume that you're aware of what happened in Miss Phillips' apartment last night? I'm very aware. And, uh, were you home last night? Of course. Where else would I be? Well, you weren't there when we came to question you, uh, this morning, so oh, I wasn't every sure. every morning at 8, the pigeons and I have a date. I beg your pardon? I feed them corn and crackers and such. And they seem to enjoy it very much. And that's a poem. Oh, yes. yes. Mm. I wrote it myself. My whole day is a poem. Every morning from 8 to 9, on eggs and muffins and juice I dine. But not at home with Alice, my friend. There the rest of the day I spend. <laughs> you think I'm a little touched, don't you? Oh, well, uh... <laughs> oh, don't no. Don't worry about it a bit. I'm not, really. It's, uh, the poem, you see, I mentioned the poem because it was recently published. Uh -huh. And everything that's in the poem is what happens in my real life. It's a bit oversimplified, of course. For example, now, Alice and I also have tea and sausages for breakfast, too. Uh, but if you put all that in it, too many details, it gets too cluttered. Yes, <laughs> you know. yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, anyway, that explains why I wasn't at home this morning when you came. Yes, I guess it does, yeah. Um... Mrs. Schmidt, you are Amber Phillips' next-door neighbor, isn't it? That is correct. Do you remember seeing or hearing anything out of the ordinary last night? I certainly do. What? Oh, why, the shouting and the gunshots, of course. Who was shouting? Well, I don't know who. But it was definitely a man and a woman. Uh, did you hear anything they said? Not much. That building is new, but the wall's very thick. Now, I want you to think very hard, Mrs. Schmidt. Try and remember exactly what you heard. But I don't have to think very hard. I, I memorized it by putting it in a poem. A poem? <laughs> yes. A, a, a poem? You see, that's a trick I learned in order to remember things. Good. <laughs> in the dead of night, I heard a gun. A very strange phenomenon. I threw back the covers and got out of bed and tried to listen to what they said. Some of the words were beyond my perception, like over and too late, and booze, his selection. But it was plain that something was wrong, and someone was there who didn't belong. Now you said gunshots, plural? Oh, yes, there were two of them. When, did, when were they fired? Oh, after the shouting. The first one woke me. Well, if you were sleeping, how did you know it was a gunshot? Young man, are you doubting my word? Uh, no, ma'am, I, I w really wouldn't put it that way. One, uh, our technician uh, says that there's only one gunshot. I just thought that maybe in the confusion you might have... Uh, we all was something. heard them. All? All. And uh, who, who might that include? Why, me and my friends. I thought you said you lived alone. Oh, heavens no. I could never live alone. I'd go crazy. Uh, who are these friends, Mrs. Schmidt? Well, there's Wendy and Peter and Michael and John and Lumpkin and Rapunzel uh, Cinderella. Oh, oh, yes, and Snow White. Snow, no seven dwarfs. Oh, heavens, no, they're too messy. I got rid of them ages ago. You know, perhaps, um... It might be good if I went down to your apartment and talked to them myself. Oh, no, you can't do that. Why not? Because when someone comes, they make themselves invisible. I see. Thank you very much, Mrs. Schmidt. Oh, but I have, I have another poem about last night. I, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you've yes. got lots of poems. Don't Thank you. I'm, I'm very when, busy. When it got quiet once more, yeah. the knave of hearts came through the door. Oh, boy. Peter Pan helped me with that one. 
Well, you know, when you get it published, you should really make sure that it gets proper credit. Yes, I suppose I should do that. Who besides us knows that you and my mother were separated? Why do you ask? Because if it becomes general knowledge, Lee's status turns from one of sympathy to one of suspicion. Uh-huh. And you're here to turn up the heat a little, is that it? Only if you're being careless. Well, now, wait a minute. Does that mean that you think I'm guilty? No. Although on more than one occasion you demonstrated a lack of intelligence in dealing with my mother, I don't think you would go that far. Well, thank you for the compliment. Care to sit down? This is not a time for pretenses. Then why don't you drop yours? I mean, what do you care if suspicion falls on Lee? Why are you really here, Amber? Because my mother wanted to see Lee elected to Congress. Helping to accomplish that would be like... Well, it would be like fulfilling a last wish. If Kate had a last wish, Amber, I doubt that it would be to see me as a congressman. Disgraced, maybe. But not that. My mother was confused. She would have come around. Well, that's something we'll never know. Well, at this time, uh, thanks to Dave Phillips, it's irrelevant. What isn't irrelevant is making sure that what we know is kept quiet. And to answer your original question, Amber, there is one person that uh, knows about separation. Our dearly beloved Andrea Summers. Where is she? Huh. We don't know. You realize that this visit has thrown my entire day off? Mrs. Schmidt, I know exactly the feeling. At four o'clock, I have my tea and dream of life as it used to be. I expect I'll have to pick up something there. Not unless you hurry. Oh, Jean, but... Jean, where have you been, huh? We had an appointment, remember? But, I'm sorry, this is something real important we have, have to talk about right now. This afternoon, I met Sergeant John Brubaker and told him about the treacherous lawbreaker. I am overwhelmed. That is really fantastic. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you very much, oh, Mr. You're quite welcome. Goodbye. 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 Thank you again. Thank you. Don't ask. Brubaker, lawbreaker. Yeah. Hey, that's not bad. Inspired, huh? Yeah. Who, who was that? Mother Goose. What's up? <laughs> well, I was wondering, buddy, has that uh, lab report come back yet? Uh, yeah. I got it right here. And yeah, what did you get? Well, the shell that we found goes to the slug that we pulled out of the body. And the slug goes to the gun we found next to Dave Phillips. But, John, I, I was hoping... Yeah, that... I know. I was hoping the same thing. But tell me something. What about... What about the gloves you found on the floor? The gloves got powder burns on that also belong to the murder weapon. There's something else we don't know about either. The right hand glove has got a rip in the index finger. Okay, so the gloves were on the floor inside the apartment yeah. and Amber Phillips, her prints were the only ones on the door. Mm -hmm. But you would think that when the murderer left... When he... the murderer left, he wiped that doorknob clean of any prints. Yeah, but now wait a minute. Amber Phillips says that when she came home, the door was unlocked. That's what she said. And that's it? No other clues? No other obvious ones. We got a, uh, we got a medical receipt on Amber Phillips from some out-of-town clinic. Well, what was that for? We don't know. I find it a little strange that she has to go out of town to get something done. I mean, Kingsley isn't uh, Palookaville. It isn't New York City either, so I'm getting it checked out. Well, let me know what you find out about that. Yeah. But in the meantime, uh, about the, the gun, who's that registered to? You call me in a half an hour and I can tell you. But I wouldn't get your hopes up. I think it's stolen. I don't know, John. I think we're missing something. We're, we're overlooking something here somewhere. Something that'll help to clear Dave Phillips. I just don't think it's gonna happen, Gene. Now when I got ladies like this who come with these loony stories about hearing gunshots and overhearing arguments in the middle of the night. Wait, what gunshots? That's the point, Gene. They're just stories. All the evidence that we have conclusively points to Dave Phillips. You know, John, 
Maybe there's some reason to hold Mrs. Schmidt's madness. Forget it, Jane. She's a nut. A crankcase. I mean, the lights are on and nobody's home. <laughs> Except maybe for uh, uh, Lumpkin or Peter Pan or Cinderella. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. I tell you what, I've got some deadlines I've got to meet, so uh, I'm going to have to get going. But in the all meantime, right. thanks for all your help. Okay. Stay in touch. All right. Okay. We'll see you. Let's take it easy. Rubegger. Yeah. Hold on a second. Okay. Go ahead. An abortion? Are you sure the name on that receipt is Amber Phillips? All right, all right, all right. Okay. What about the gun? Did you get a make on the gun? Who? Kill Prescott. There's no answer at Andrea's apartment. Nobody on the staff has heard from her. She's gone. And you've heard nothing from her, Lee? No, I haven't. You are the person she's most likely to contact. Well, if she does, I'm not going to keep it a secret. Well, I don't think we're going to have very long to wait. Now, my guess is she's going to try to hold us against Lee. Just let her try. Blackmail? Well, if not for money, perhaps uh, for a little affection. I think she's going to ask for Lee in exchange for keeping her mouth shut. And if and when she does, I'll play her to the press like one of several thwarted young ladies disappointed when I married Kate. You see, she can't prove that Kate and I were separated. We can. Sebastian, about that tasteful statement, we're going to have to hurry if we make the 6 o'clock news. 